Hey folks, it's Matt once again. Welcome back to another video from the month of October. And this time, a film I've talked about before in the past, but I think it's one of those hidden gems, which is why those type of hidden gems I like bringing back every once in a while for people who never saw the older videos. Of a known origin film that came out in 1983, the year I was born. And what this film is about is Peter Weller, he's the king of his castle, plays Bart Hughes, he's a Wall Street executive, he's ready to get this deal, things are working out well, his wife is played by Shannon Tweed, and they have a kid, <clears throat> they're going to go off on a vacation, he's going to be by himself, working on this deal, and if it goes through, things will look a lot richer for his family. But as he's trying to do this and work on this project, he has that place to himself. This visitor fucks up and terrorizes his home day by day. And it's a nasty asshole of a rat. And that's the thing. They're like, it's about rats? Like man versus rat movie? What? This is written by George P. Casmanos, who I'm a big fan of. Rambo 2, Cobra, Leviathan, this movie, Tombstone. I know people are like, well, did he really direct some of those? But I know he directed this movie, and he did a wonderful job with it. I know he directed this movie, and he did a wonderful job with that. So whether him or Stallone did Cobra, Rambo 2, I have to think George because Moss had some hand in it. Because based on these two films alone, he's got talent, in my opinion. <clears throat> And this one, it goes at a good pace. It's, I think, under 90 minutes long. Did not overstay its welcome. It's a good-looking movie. It's a slick-looking movie. Because you have these really nice... I forget what kind of lens that is. Or what... Is it micro, macro? It's not a lens, but... Certain ways of shooting... very up close to see like the point of view of the rat and sort of figure out like where he's going where he's been and give us little glimpses of a rat but sort of more so his destruction as in a way he just slowly driving Peter Weller's character crazy day by day and he's trying to do the best that he can he tosses his guy who's an exterminator. And the guy he talks to, if you recognize him, you remember the film Scanners, the first film? The famous scene where the guy's head gets blown up? He's the guy whose head got blown up. He did a good job in this movie as the exterminator, who's given him tips. Uh, Lawrence Dane, who I remember from this underrated film from the 70s called Rituals. He's in this as Peter Willow's boss. He has a couple scenes there. And it really does ratchet up this battle between man and this animal. Between Peter Weller and this rat. Where it starts off with the rat you know, fucks up the water, his dishwasher, and it floods the place. He'll eat through his cereal, so he picks it up, and there's holes all over. And then he places traps, and the traps get fucked up. He gets a cat. The cat gets fucked up, and in fact, the cat is left at a place, so when Peter Weller opens the door, is pouring something, there's something dripping down in his blood, and there's the dead cat. I think maybe that's where the title of a known origin comes in. It's like, what the fuck is this thing? Super rat? Rat from outer space? They don't go into that, but you can make the case it is. With how crazy it gets. But at the same time, I think most people call it ridiculous, but to me, it maintained that balance. Yeah, maybe the very, very end, but to me, it was an enjoyable thing. Where he gets this deer, like going to battle, and he makes this handmade. Makes it handmade. He makes this bat, and he puts a bunch of the traps and nails in the bat. And 
again, people may find that ridiculous, but to me, it was satisfying. Like, he's going to get the damn thing. And this transition, this character, where at the beginning, he's very much wanting to be nice and tidy and clean. And it's all about the material things and this apartment, this place. It's bigger than apartments. So. And then by the end, he's had nightmares about the rat still being here when his family gets back and hurting his wife, scaring his kid, hurting his kid. Uh, there's rat poison, the kid gets into it, and that's the only he eats it. All these nightmares fueled by all the shit that keeps going on. Like, one scene that I would be freaked out too. He tries to take the piss, lifts the lid of the toilet, and the rat tries to attack him. Or he's in the shower, and the rat's on the top of it and jumps down on him. It just won't let him be. I granted, you say, well, why don't you just move? But Tim is like, why the fuck should I move? It's my fucking house. <laughs> and he just goes to war and he just tears, like, from going from neat and tidy, just tearing this place up, beating the shit out of everything, a hole in the ceiling, making the raft fall down, coming for him, even to the point where, uh, yeah, I thought this was a nice, I don't know if it was the writing or the directing, I'm trying to find the screenplay. Brian Taggart or George Pita's models? The screenplay, Brian Taggart, director George Pita. Which came up with the idea of <clears throat> the house within the house. Meaning in the basement, there's actually a little dollhouse type replica of the actual house. And that's where he finally kills the rat. It's by smashing that replica house. Just like he smashed his real house. So like, those things of that nature, I think, made it a bit better than people will give it credit for. <clears throat> and there's little times where it does have a, a sense of humor to it. Like this rat exterminator, which at first we think, oh, well, what's up with this guy? By the end, he comes to Peter Weller, and Peter Weller has a gear on and just looks at him. And the guy just, finally, he has no words. Like, previously, he could talk, talk, talk. Now he's like, and then just leaves. Just like, what the hell are you going to say to a guy who's wearing this? And, of course, there is pretty on the nose, but comparisons to Moby Dick. I mean, there's a point where there's, you see the Moby Dick book. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, that's on the nose, but it didn't bother me as much as other people. <clears throat> and this film didn't do well when it came out. <clears throat> I guess because the trailer, s some of the trailer makes it seem as if it's a haunted house movie. And then when you look at the cover, I'm like, oh, it's a preacher film. But, I don't know, maybe people are like, okay, it's a pain that you're ripped. What is this, a werewolf movie? Is it a sequel to the Howling, but is it a different name? <clears throat> but even when I first saw this, I saw this when I was in Texas. I rented the VHS tape. I saw the cover. I went, oh, Peter Weller. I like Peter Weller. But... I didn't know it was about a rat until I watched it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's a monster movie? Is a... I, mean, I thought it was like a monster or werewolf movie, but it is a rat movie. I think the best killer rat movie, if that means anything. What about Willard? Well, I like this film more. I say killer, but he doesn't... Well, he kills the cat, but... It's one of those things where, for a film, that if you describe the plot, people go, huh? It's like, well, just watch the film, give it a chance. If you don't like it, it's film, but just give it a chance. It's well-directed. It's uh, I think the script is a bit smarter than people give it credit for. <clears throat> Peter Willer, very solid performance. He's in this domain. He's in this uh, wheelhouse. 
you know, I think it's one of his better roles. And nice POV and just nice shots of how they shot the rat. Tipped it, hit him for the most part, and little tricks they did, like just seeing movement under the covers as it's going towards Peter Weller, uh, things of that, that nature. And again, it is a short enough film, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. Yeah, I agree with Kenneth Thomas, LA Times, a visual tour de force, fast, taut, and darkly comic. I agree. I think if you've never seen or heard of this film, it's well worth a look. I'm glad the film finally got Blu-ray for the really good picture quality. <clears throat> the interviews are okay. I do wish we would have got an interview with Peter Weller. I know he's on the older commentary track, but like Peter Weller doesn't want to do interviews anymore for anything, which sucks. But hey, it's his decision. But of unknown origin, I think it's a hidden gem. If you haven't seen it, I think it's well worth at least one look. And if you have seen it, it's a fun movie to rewatch for the Halloween season. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys later. Bye bye.